Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and a smell of gun smoke. story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say, if there ever was a cereal designed to boost a family's breakfast morale, it's new sugar crinkles. Why, that sugar rice treat that's just right sweet makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Come breakfast time, just pour on milk, and you've got a breakfast main dish as you like it. Those golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice we call sugar crinkles are really special. Not too sweet, the way some sugar-coated cereals seem to be, and not like others that don't seem sweet enough. Sugar crinkles really are the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And whether you eat them from the bowl for breakfast, from the pack as a snack, or both ways, you love sugar crinkles. Try them soon. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. Bottles, Zach. Been a long, dusty trail up from Texas. I don't care to ride into Dodge Soap. Yeah. <laughs> Be on that. Yeah. Uh, now, don't kill it. I come up the same trail uh, you did. Uh, I'm just as dry. Uh, 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 I hope I never see another moss horn steer. Now, I'm going to settle down and be a bartender or something easy like yeah. that. <laughs> Tomorrow you'll wish you was back trailing cattle. You wish you'd never seen Dodge. Hey, come on, my turn in that bottle. Oh, by tomorrow, maybe there won't be no Dodge. Maybe we'll have torn it plumb apart. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Hey, here's a cougar howl tonight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, then look yonder. What? That there's Alaparaganza. Let's start with it. <laughs> Tell him we're here, Zach. Show him how we live in Texas. <laughs> ah! <Yeah. laughs> All right, hold it there. Uh, put a bullet through his hat, Jack. Shoot his heels away. Get down off those horses. I sure I'll get down, mister. That's what I come here for. All the way from Texas. Well, you're welcome here. But don't get any notions about shooting up this town. Well, who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal. And I'll take your gun till you're sober enough to carry it again. Nobody takes my gun. All right, then ride back to camp. Don't let him buffalo you, Zach. He won't. <laughs> Mister, I'm staying. Me and my gun. And there'll be a marshal for breakfast if you try to stop me. All right, I won't. I'm going to kill you for doing that. <laughs> Awful close, Mr. Dillon. I saw the whole thing. Yeah, another drunken cowboy with more fire than sense. Well, you had to kill him. Yeah. Take his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. Give me that. Don't shoot me. No, nobody ain't going to shoot you, mister. Get on your feet. Yeah, come on, get it. Oh. Busted my head. You'll be all right. 
But your friend tried to shoot me. He's dead. Uh, you killed him. To keep him from killing me. There'd be trouble about this, Marshal. No. Don't you get anything like that started. Oh, not me. His brother, Howard Bulow. He's out the camp. I know him, Marshal. He'd come after you. All right, I'll be here. <laughs> he won't be like that. Howard wouldn't face no gunfighter. He shoots you in the back or from alley at night. I know him, Marshal. It'll happen. You want to bury your friend here or take him back to camp? I'll take him back to camp. All right, we'll help you time across his horse. We can use his rope, Chester. Yes, sir. More coffee here, Matt. Uh, no, no thanks, Kitty. Can't say I blame you. You'd think a restaurant like Delmonico's could at least make good coffee. <laughs> I never saw a woman yet who didn't find fault with everybody's cooking but her own. <laughs> Women have more taste than men. That's yeah, all. sure. More arguments, too. Matt. Yeah. That man you had to shoot today, his brother, is that what's on your mind? Yeah, I suppose. I've been thinking. you never seen him. If he does ride into town, you won't be able to recognize him, will you? Well, let's say he'll probably be the first man who tries to shoot me in the back. Oh, Matt. No, don't worry about it. It's been tried before. <laughs> I'm still around. Come on. Let's get out of here. Okay. Sure. Front Street's not very crowded tonight. Ah, it's early. Hmm. Now, wait a minute. Huh? What is it? Now, that man leaning up against the post up there. Wait he turns his head. I want to get a look at him. Something in the aftermath? Yeah, there. Yeah. No, it's someone who's after me. Bulow's brother. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Sure enough to ask him anyway. You stay here. All right. You looking for me, Bulow? What? Your name is Bulow, isn't it? Oh. I'll bet you're him. I'll bet you're the marshal. I am. I'll take your gun now. Well, take it. All right. That won't stop me. You'll get another gun and shoot me in the back, is that it? Any way I can, Marshal. Look, Bulow, your brother tried to kill me, and he'd have done it if I hadn't stopped him. Ain't nobody kills a Bulow and gets by with it. I don't care what he done. Well, maybe you need a few days to think it over. Maybe that'll help. I ain't got a few days. You have now. Turn around and walk straight ahead of me, Bulow. You're going to jail for a while. No, I ain't done nothing. Turn around. And get moving. What can I do for you? My name's Will Jacklin. I'm boss of the drag guard herd. We're holding up river. I come for Howard Bulow. Uh huh. I see. Well, turn him loose. No. No, I can't turn him loose. He didn't do a thing last night. He was just standing on the street the way I heard it. He threatened to shoot me in the back, and he says he's still going to do it. You killed his brother, didn't you? In self defense. Don't matter. You'll have to look out for yourself. But none of my men's going to lay in a Kansas jail when he ain't done nothing. None of your men's going to walk free waiting to put a bullet in my back either. I got eight men outside, Marshal. I got ten more with the cattle. We come a long way. We had a hard drive. We're all Texans, and no Dodge City Marshal's going to rub our nose in dirt. Nobody's trying to, Jacqueline. 
Fine thing they hire men like you to kill cowboys on a little spree. You called shooting me a little spree? You could have crippled him up. I wish that were true, but I couldn't take the chance. Another shot in need to kill me. Talking's a waste of time. I want Bulow out of here. I'll do this. I'll turn him over to you when you've sold your herd and are headed back to Texas, if you promise to keep him with you. I want him now. Ah. Now, not as long as he's set on killing me. Eighteen men I got, Marshal. Not counting myself. Fourteen of us will be back tonight, and we'll get him. Jacqueline, don't try it. And after we get him, we'll really shoot your town up. You people have mistreated the last Texas cowboy you're going to. Tonight, Marshal. I'm still around. Come on. Let's get out of here. Okay. Sure. I can't be drinking now, Doc. Oh, Matt, I don't think they'll ride in like that tonight. Those cowboys always talk big. Yeah, maybe. And maybe they're just full of vinegar after the long drive they've had, huh? <laughs> now they want to hoop and holler something. Bulo's full of more than vinegar, Doc. You think so? A two for a two thing, a nine for an eye. Oh, my, the world's got its evil ways, all right. Marshal Dillon. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Doc. Oh, hello, Risley. What are you going to do about those Texans, Marshal? Well, I don't know, Mr. Risley. I haven't given it much thought. Well, you better start thinking, Marshal. I heard that, Jacqueline, right in here this morning. He means what he says, that man. What did he say? They're going to destroy Dodge. That's what he said. Him and all those wild Texans he's got. Mr. Risling, the man I got in jail aims to shoot me from ambush if I turn him loose. But I can't help that, Marshal. Well, I can and he's staying where he is until he comes to his senses. But what about the rest of us? It's all right for you to save your own skin, but what about us? They'll shoot up the town and maybe burn my hotel. Oh, no, don't get all excited, Mr. Risling. It won't help matters any. Look, why don't you just forget about it? Jacqueline may never show up at all. Well, that's what I come to tell you. What? Frank Paris rode by the Dragar camp a little while ago, and he says those men were just about to leave for Dodge. That means they'll be here any minute. Now... What are you going to do? If your family is getting weary of the same old breakfast cereal every morning, time to retire it and introduce him to new sugar crinkles. Say, new sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And I'm here to tell you, sugar crinkles make breakfast more fun than a circus. Golden crisp nuggets of sugar-coated rice and every nugget in your breakfast bowl just right sweet. Forget your experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet and with others that don't seem sweet enough. Treat yourself and your favorite family to new sugar crinkles. At breakfast time and at snack time, too. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be big. Sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. And a snack from the pack, oh boy. Can't be big, just right sweet. Sugar crinkles good to eat. Now back to gum smoke. Left the Yellow Braganza and walked over to the jail to wait for Jacqueline and his mob of cowboys. There I tried to have a talk with Bulo. But the only response I could get out of him was the same. He was going to kill me the first chance he got. Well, maybe Doc was right. Maybe the hard life of the cattle trail did drive man a little mad. Anyway, it was a poor choice they'd given me. And I didn't like it. 
You'll be wanting a shotgun, won't you, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Chester. Here you are. Ah. Uh, Chester. Hmm? You, uh, don't have to get mixed up in this, you know. I know that. My. I think I'm going to take a shotgun, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now they want to hoop and holler something. Bulo's full of more than vinegar, Doc. You think? About ten feet apart, huh? All right, sir. There they come, Mr. Dillon. All of them. Yeah. You're acting like a fool, Jacqueline. We'll see about that. You make trouble here and the law will be after you wherever you go. I don't worry none about no law. I was raised plum free. We all were. Yeah, sure you were. But that doesn't leave you free to form a mob, raid a jail, shoot up a town. What's the matter with you men? What's the matter with you? You put an innocent man in jail. Any man who wants to kill somebody isn't very innocent, Jacqueline. Do you have to wait till he does it? I don't have to wait for nothing. Marshal, we've come for Bulo. Uh, let, let them have him, Marshal. Turn him loose. Hurry. You keep out of this, Risling. He's right, Marshal. You let him go peaceable and we'll leave town. But if you make us fight, we'll go right on fighting. Uh, you heard him. He means it. Uh, you do it. Shut up, Risling. Jacqueline, this is a shotgun I'm holding. The first move you or any of your men make, I'll cut you in two with it. Maybe. But we're too many. You can't kill us all. You'll die, and so will your friend there. That right, man? Yeah. Right. Texas men ain't afraid to die, Marshal. But they ain't gonna get tromped on. I'm through talking, Marshal. Get set, men. And when you finish him, go rip this town wide open. Do it for me. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get Bulo. All right. Oh, thank heaven. You used your head, Marshal. You and I'd both been dead if you hadn't. I'm not doing it because of you or me, Jacqueline. I'm doing it because too many other men would have died. Well... It don't matter, as long as you turn him loose. All right, bring him over here, Chester. Well, I knew you couldn't keep me long, Marshal. And you were right, Bulo. You shouldn't have locked me up at all. Go on back to camp and try to do some thinking while you're there, huh? Sure, Marshal. And you know what I'll be thinking about? You. Sitting next to an open window. Or walking down a dark street. I'm going to kill you yet. Wherever he was from, whatever kind of life he'd led, Bulo was a primitive man. Somewhere he'd heard about revenge. It's a simple idea, an eye for an eye. And he took it to heart. I realize now that there was no dealing with him. The man was incapable of change. And Jacqueline wasn't much better. But I forgot about Jacqueline. It was Bulo who'd be back. Still, two days went by, and there was no sign of him. There's a couple of chairs, Mr. Dillon. Let's sit there. All right, Chester. Well, nobody can't shoot you from here, unless it comes up in front. Oh, well, that's unlikely with Bulo. What's the matter with men like him? Oh, I don't know, Chester. Too rough a life, maybe. The war. Oh, a lot of things. Well, he's plumb crazy, if you ask me. Uh, say, ain't that Miss Kitty coming up the street? Hmm? 
What's she walking so fast for? Well, I don't know. Oh, there you are, Matt. Hello, Chester. Evening, Miss Kitty. Sit down, Kitty. You wear yourself out being in such a hurry Matt, all the time. Matt, I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, huh? trouble? For you, yeah. Bulo's back in town. Well, have you seen him? No, Sam did. Said he stopped in for a drink a little while ago. Is he still there? He left, but he told Sam he's got a room at the Dodge house. He might be there. Well, I'd like to find him before he finds me. At least we could see each other that way. Be careful, Matt. Uh, you better come along, Chester. Four eyes are better than two. Yes, sir. Thanks, Kitty. I'll see you later. Yeah, sure. What do you do if we find him, Mr. Dillon? Well, it's no good talking to him anymore. Maybe I can scare him out of it somehow. I sure hope so. The hotel looks pretty empty from here. Marshal. Chester. Hello, Mr. Isley. I'm looking for Bulo. Is he here? I don't, Martin. He's shooting. I want to know if he's here, Risley. He went upstairs a few minutes ago, Marshal. Which room? Well, now, Marshal. On the landing, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I missed him. Come on. in one of those rooms. Here we've got him now. Yeah, but I don't know which one. You stay here, Chester. I'm going down the hall. He might come out of any one of those doors. All right, sir. Okay? Yeah, it's okay, Chester. He didn't hit you, did he? No, he tried, but it was too late. He was already dying. Well, I'm sure glad. Yeah. But he died about as uselessly as a man could, Chester. For no reason at all. None at all. Now, Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes, is proud to present Gun Smoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of. Gun smoke. Gun smoke. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. It's easy to do your whole tribe a big favor, Mother. Just pour every big and little Indian in your camp a breakfast bowl full of Post Toasties. Post Toasties, you know, are the heap good cornflakes. <coughs> They're the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Fresh as fresh can be. Say, Post Toasties are crackling crisp. Sweet kernel corn flavor, toasted. That's Post Toasties. Post Toasties are packed with nourishment, too. A bowl of Post Toasties with sugar and milk helps your big braves and little Indians start the day right. Get Post Toasties soon. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad.
fellow here looking for you, Mr. Dillon. Oh, hello. My name is Brandt, Marshal. I and my son got a ranch up in the South Fork of the Solomon. Oh, what can I do for you, Mr. Brandt? Well, uh, I ain't no ways responsible, you understand. It's been kind of uh, put on me, you might say. Huh? <laughs> what has? Well, Marshal, the, well, the engine started it. Hey, they was riding for horses just a couple of days ago. And they'd have got them and probably me too, but for this kid they had along. A kid? Yeah. And he tried to come in ahead of the rest of the engines, and he showed himself too soon is what happened. My son saw him in time to warn me, and we put up a standoff fight, and the Marapahoes didn't get a single horse. Well, what's the trouble, then? We got the kid. He's still there, wilder than a deer. He got shot in the leg a little. We brought him into the house after. Uh, I want to know what to do with him, Marshal. Oh. Well, uh, how old's the boy, Mr. Brandt? Hard to say. I bet he's uh, 12 or under. That's pretty young to be on a raiding party. Yeah, it sure is. But he's awful wild. He's tried to kill me twice already. Well, then why don't you turn him over to a reservation somewhere? They'll take care of him. Well, I can't do that, Marshal. They wouldn't have him. Well, why not? Well, he ain't an Indian. He's a white boy. A white boy? Sure acts like an Indian, though. I think he's been living with them Arapahoes a long time. That's what I think. Well, I don't know what I can do about it, Mr. Brandt. Uh, one thing is sure, Marshal, I can't keep him no more. And it don't seem right, you know, for a white boy to go back living among them Arapahoes. No. So you got to come up there with me and do something about him. Well, Mr. Brandt, I'm a U.S. Marshal. I'm hired to keep the peace, not to play nursemaid to orphans. Yeah. You're the only man I've heard of around here that I thought might help that boy. Well, if you want, you want. I'll just run him off into the prairie, I guess. All, all right. All right, Mr. Brandt. We'll ride back with you in the morning. <laughs> see nobody around, Mr. Brandt. No. No, my son will be out with the cattle this time of day. I told him I locked that kid in the potato cellar when he had to leave the house. Is that it over there? That's it. He'll be in there. Oh, there. I'll just open the door, Marshal. Maybe he'll come out. All right. Uh, Chester, grab him if he runs, huh? Yes, sir. Watch out for him. He'll do anything, that kid. Hey, kid. Come on out. Stand back now. Well, well, look at him. He'd hardly know he was a white boy, Mr. Dillon. Hello, son. You've come to kill me, haven't you? Oh, my goodness. Nobody's going to kill you, son. We're here to help you, that's all. (laughs) You look pretty weak to me. Is it that hole in your leg, or haven't they been feeding you? He won't eat, Marshal. At least he wouldn't when I left. You been eating, kid? No. See what I mean? It's easier to be tortured on an empty stomach. Oh, now, son, nobody's going to torture you. Nobody's going to kill you. I'd just like to have a look at that leg where you got hit. I'm all right. Come on, uh, let's go in the house and see for sure, huh? No, well, he's fainting. Oh, I got him. Oh, the poor little kid. Why well, haven't you done anything about this bullet in his leg, Brian? I tried, Marshal. He wouldn't let me near it. Tried to bite me. Well, he can't fight now. Come on, show me where to put him. I carried the boy into the house, laid him out on a bed, and went to work. He came to in the middle of it, but he didn't move a muscle or utter a sound. The bullet wasn't buried very deep. I dug it out, cleaned the wound as best I could. When it was over, I got some strong tea down him, and then he went to sleep. A couple of hours later, I noticed he'd waked up, and I went over to the bed. You fixed my leg. Sure, of course I did. Why? Well, you might have died if I hadn't. 
A wound like that gets them affected. Rappahoes don't care if their prisoners die. Well, you're not a prisoner here. Yes, I am. Uh, look, what's your name, anyway? Yorkie. Well, is that all? It's all I remember. Is that what the Arapahoes call you? Yes. They won't give me another name till I'm a brave. Well, Yorkie is a white man's name. Where are your parents? Killed in a raid, they told me. I've been a Arapaho ever since. Uh, uh, what was your father's name, do you know? I was too young. Well, then how come you remember English so well? An old man of the tribe makes me talk every day. I don't know where he learned, but he says it'll come to use later when I'm a brave. In our wars against the white man. You're a white man, Yorkie. Yes, but I live with the Arapahoes. Well, you did, but you're back among your own people now. you got to learn to live a different life. No. Wait. You mean you want to go back with the Indians? First, I have to make a big coup. Make a big coup? What for? I'll be killed if I don't. What are you talking about? I allowed myself to be seen and expose the raiding party. So I'll be killed if I don't make a coup and return with a scalp or some horses. You? A kid like you? Unless you kill me first. Oh, Yorkie, if I was going to kill you, why did I take that bullet out of your leg? I don't know. Well, nobody's going to kill you. Now, you just get that out of your head. And you're not going to kill anybody either or steal any horses. So forget about it. If I make a big coup, my mistake on the raid will be forgiven. And I'll be the youngest brave in the whole tribe. Well, we'll argue about that later. But what were you done on this raid in the first place? A white boy must prove himself many times. It's harder than for an Indian. That's why they let me come. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got quite a problem, haven't you, Yorkie? But uh, right now, why don't you go back to sleep for a while, huh? I'll have some soup for you when you wake up. Well, good morning, Mr. Brand. Good morning, Chester. Uh, Marshal. Good morning. Your son left a few minutes ago. He said he wouldn't be back till evening. Yeah, and I ought to be out with him. We're all through, but I'll cook you some eggs. Oh, just coffee for me. All right, sir. Well, what are you going to do about that kid, Marshal? Well, there's not much I can do, Brant. You can't leave him here. Uh, well, I didn't bring him here. Here you are. Uh, Marshal, I'm serious. Even if it was an ordinary kid, I got no way to raise him. And this one is is bad. I told you, he's been after me twice already. Well, he needs a scalp to take back. It's a matter of life or death with him. He ain't taking mine. You really think he might kill somebody, Mr. Dillon? Well, left alone, yes. But he's so young. Well, I heard Billy the Kid killed a man when he was 12. Age doesn't seem to matter much. Well, can't you talk him out of it? Show him it's wrong? Well, I've tried, but Yorkie thinks like an Indian... He doesn't know anything about the white man's world. Yeah. How's he feeling this morning, anyway? Well, I'd hoped his fever would be down, but it isn't. He needs a doctor, that's what. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Brant, is this one of your guns? Well, where'd you get it? Yorkie had it when I went in there this morning. But he was too weak to use it. No, I told you he's a bad one, Marshal. He'll kill someone yet. All Yorkie understands right now is kill or be killed, Brant. Uh, if you got a wagon, we'll take him into Dodge. Say, what goes on at your house at breakfast? Well, you can take it from me. The best thing that can go on your breakfast table is Post Toasties. Yes, sir, Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes. Those golden crisp cornflakes are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. You know how to prove it? Well, just pour out breakfast bowlfuls of post-toasties for your whole tribe. 
Then watch how they enjoy them. Those Toasties are crisp and tasty. From the first bite down to the last spoonful, that sweet kernel corn flavor makes your breakfast. So always ask for Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heat good cornflakes. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. Remember, Post Toasties is one of the famous triple wrap Post cereals, guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Now back to Gun Smoke. On the drive under Dodge, Yorkie never moved or never said a word. I looked back at him from time to time and tried to put myself in his place. Here was a boy whose only experience of life had been with a warlike tribe of Indians, a tribe which he couldn't even go back to without a white man's scalp or some stolen horses. Now, this in itself would be a problem for a grown man. But little Yorkie also felt himself a prisoner, sooner or later to be killed. It was no wonder that during the next few days, as he lay on the couch in Doc's office, he watched us with wild, restless eyes. In spite of his obvious courage, I think he was a little frightened. And when Doc was suddenly called out on a case in the country for several days, I had an idea. And I sent Chester to find Kitty. You want me to nurse him? Is that it, Matt? Well, partly, but also I thought maybe you could talk to him a little. It's, uh, no, it's hard for him to trust a man. I know. Chester told me about him. Yeah, he'll be well enough pretty soon to get into trouble. Bad trouble. I'll do what I can. Where is he, in the front room? Yeah, on Doc's couch. And, uh, uh, Kitty, uh, try to get him to eat something, huh? <laughs> I haven't had much luck. All uh, right. But you stay here. Yeah, sure. Hello, Yorkie. Who are you? My name's Kitty. I'm going to take care of you. Why? Because you're sick. Wouldn't you take care of somebody who's sick? Not an enemy. <laughs> We're not enemies, Yorkie. Even if we were, I'd take care of you. Prisoners get well by themselves, or they die. Not around me, they don't. Anyway, you're not a prisoner. You can leave any time you want to. Is that the truth? Of course it is. Unless you do something wrong, like killing or stealing. But let's not talk about all that. I want to know about you. All sorts of things. What it was like with the Arapahoes, or what you remember about when you were younger. I won't tell any secrets. I don't want to know any secrets, Yorkie. But maybe you can tell me. Well, did you have a mother in the tribe? Tell me about that. I'm a white boy. They've never let me have a mother. Anyway, I was big enough, I didn't need one. Did you ever want one, Yorkie? I don't know. I, I guess so, sometimes. It's better to have a mother. Mine was killed in a raid when they found me. I know. Do you remember her at all? No. Sometimes I think I do. Sometimes when I'm asleep, that is. What do you remember about her then? I don't know. Just a feeling, I guess. Sort of like being warm. Is that what it's like? Yeah. I think that's what it's like, Yorkie. Very much like that. I'm hungry, Kitty. Would you let me have something to eat? Of course I will, Yorkie. Of course I will. <laughs> Kitty spent as much time with Yorkie as she could manage. And whenever she'd been with him, he always seemed calmer and less frightened. And we began to have hopes that maybe the boy would take to his new life after all. Chester and I were busy, and except for taking some food up now and then, we turned Yorkie's care over to Kitty completely. 
When will Doc be back, Mr. Dillon? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Chester. He sent word he'd have to be out there another day. I guess Mrs. Taylor's been mighty sick. Mm. You think maybe Yorkie could just live with Doc? Ah, oh, I don't know what to do with him, Chester. Well, we sure got to do something with him. Yeah. Where's Yorkie? What? Uh, well, he's upstairs, Kitty. Have you been up there today? Have you seen him? Uh, no, I... I thought you were with him. I couldn't get here till now. Yorkie's gone, Matt. What? I'll go take a look. I've already searched the place. He isn't there. Well, let's look in the street, Chester. Maybe somebody's seen him. You better find him. That's all I can say. Yeah, we'll find him, Kitty. Don't worry. Maybe he's got hold of a gun. Yeah, I hope not. Anyway, if he's as smart as I think he is, he'll locate a horse to get away on first. Maybe a couple of them. Doggone it. Just when I was beginning to think he was going to settle down a little. Uh, you never know. But I still got faith in that kid somehow, Chester. Now, here, let's cross over to Moss Grimmick's stable there, huh? All right, sir. There's Moss now, just inside there. Yeah. Moss? Oh, Marshal, Chester. Oh, Moss? Yeah, I was going to come see you, Marshal. Oh? That kid you brought in the other day, I caught him trying to steal one of my horses. You got Yorkie? Is that his name? Where is he, Moss? Back here. He put up quite a fight for a sick boy, Marshal. A new wildcat. I had to tie him up finally. I throwed him in the saddle room there. He sure mean one. There he is, little devil. He'll hang yet. Give me your knife, Chester. Oh, don't untie him, Marshal. I'll handle him, Moss. Here you are, Mr. Dillon. Ah. Yorkie, I'm sorry this happened. Uh, I'd have given you a horse if you'd have asked me. Ah, there. I wasn't going to steal him. And what was you doing riding him out of that stall, young fellow? Wait a minute, Moss. Hmm? Yorkie, you say you weren't going to steal him? No. Well, what were you doing then? Kitty didn't come and I got lonely. I don't know. Well, I, I think I do, Yorkie. You just wanted to be around something familiar, something you know. Isn't that right? I guess so. And you've lived with horses all your life. You know them pretty well. So you came over here. I wasn't going to steal them. I just wanted to get on them. You know, I half believe the boy, Marshal. He's telling the truth, Moss. Yorkie, I'm sorry I treated you rough. Why don't you tell me? You were going to kill me. Me? Kill anybody? A kid? Guess you don't know me very well. What are you going to do with me now? Well, uh, Doc will be back tomorrow, Yorkie. If he says it's okay for you to stay up, well, you can. In the meantime, Kitty will be there. All right. Tell you what, Yorkie. You get well, you come over here. I'll give you a horse to ride. You will? Sure. I got lots of horses. You can take your pick. What if I steal them? I've had horses stole before. I don't understand you. He trusts you, Yorkie. We all do. You shouldn't. You shouldn't trust anybody. Oh, uh, maybe not, but we do anyway. Uh, Moss, I, I, I got an idea. No? I, uh, I don't suppose you could use a stable boy around here, huh? Some kid who really knows horses and who's used to hard work. Well, I don't have much money, Marshal. If I could feed him a little and maybe fix him in bed in the saddle room here. Of course, a good boy's like a good horse. There's bound to be some hot blood in him. Try to lift my hair, I'll whop him good. That clear, young fella? They're talking about me? Of course they're talking about you, Yorkie. One thing I ask. Can't hire nobody less than he has a whole name. Well, Yorkie don't know his last name. Well, call him anything. Uh, uh, Kelly. Kelly, that's a good name. Yorkie Kelly? Grimmick and Kelly. Yeah, sounds all right to me. You people get out of here now. I got work to do. And when Doc says you're pitting Yorkie, you come back. I'll be back, Moss. Now, 
Now, Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes, is proud to present Gunsmoke. City and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say there, next time you hear a crackling noise in your kitchen, you better get up and investigate. Maybe somebody just couldn't wait for his breakfast of crackling crisp post toasties. And that's a treat you shouldn't miss. Post toasties, you know, are the heat good cornflakes. Why, after one taste, I'll bet anything you'll agree with me. Post Toasties is just the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. There's nothing quite like sweet kernel corn flavor when it's toasted right in. Toasted into crisp, fresh cornflakes. Man, oh man, that's Post Toasties. Heat good cornflakes. Better try them. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. <laughs> It's a darn shame, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what is, Chester? Well, for long it'll be too cold to set out here of an evening. <laughs> Winter's too cold, summer's too hot. How do you like spring, Chester? Oh, spring's all right. Up here. But I remember back in Waco, we all got the ague every spring. Terrible fever. Makes man feel like a harp with a thousand strings. Yeah, I know. I've had it. That uh, stage is mighty late tonight. It sure is. You know, my ma had a theory we'd be immune if we had three hard-boiled eggs on Good Friday. Oh? But if that didn't work and we got the ague anyway, she'd tie salt mackerel onto our feet. <laughs> well, that ought to have toughened up your feet anyway. Well, we all survive. Hey, look. Here comes the stage driver. Why, it's Jim Buck. Oh, yeah. Marshal. Hello, Chester. Hello, Jim. Uh, trouble, Jim? I'd call it trouble, Marshal. Got held up. One passenger shot down in cold blood. What? You're the meanest thing I ever saw. Where'd this happen? Other side of Wagon Bed Springs, between there and Jesse Daggett's. Daggett's? He runs the stage station out there near the Colorado line. And I got a mighty strong feeling Jesse Daggett's in on this, Marshal. What makes you think so, Jim? Uh, he knew I was carrying gold. After we'd laid over an hour or so at the station, I seen Daggett talking to a man who just rode in. He's cussed looking a gunman as you'd want. Well, then what happened? How the fellow rode off, left before we did. Was alone? Yeah, just him, with his face covered. He never said a word. He took the strong box and robbed the passengers. And then he got on his horse and turned around and shot one of them right through the head. Why would a man do that, Marshal? I, I, I don't understand it. Well, maybe he just likes to kill, Jim. But I'll go back with you tomorrow. Maybe we can find out. <laughs> We made the trip down to the Santa Fe Trail next day, through Wagon Bed Springs and on to Jesse Daggett Stage Station. I sat on the box with Jim Buck while Chester rode inside with the passengers. And by evening, everybody was glad when we reached Daggett's. It was a typical road ranch with a large eating room and a row of sleeping quarters for the travelers. Jesse Daggett himself was a tall, angular man. Gaunt and gray. He was quiet, but one could feel the trouble that lay inside him. The first chance I had to talk to him was in the yard after supper. Cold weather be coming soon. I'll have to lay in more whiskey. Uh, 
You, uh, had this station long? Three years come spring. Built it myself. Pawnees try to burn it down now and then, but I'm still here. <laughs> you plan to stay here, Daggett? Man's plans are his own, Marsh. Ah, I'm sorry. It was just an idle question. It's all right. Yeah, I think I'd like it here myself. No neighbors, but lots of company passing through. It ain't all good company. Yeah, lots of people travel, good and bad. True. Like uh, the man who held up Jim Buck's stage yesterday and shot that passenger. What about him? Well, you might call him the bad kind, don't you think? What I think won't raise the dead, Marshal. It might keep more people from dying, though. I figure that's what you're doing here, looking for that fellow. Jim Buck thinks it might have been that gunman you were talking to here the day of the holdup. That was Nat Pilcher. But I don't care what Jim Buck thinks. Well, everybody expects a stage to get held up once in a while, but it's a different matter to shoot people down for nothing. And I'll figure this man, unless he's just a born killer. He could have a lot of reasons. Men are all different. Yeah, sure. All got different reasons for doing what they do, living the way they live. Guess it's what's happened to them in the past spells it out. That's true. I'll tell you something, Marshal, but ain't what you want to hear. I believe in letting every man kill his own snakes. Now, this business is between whoever the bandit is and me. Is that it? That's it, exactly. Every man for himself, you might say. I won't interfere, but I won't help. I see. Got to be like that. Even though a man was killed for nothing? Let dog eat dog, I say. Yeah. I hope you won't regret it, Daggett. One more regret won't break me, Marshal. Trying to get anything out of Jesse Daggett was hopeless. But I still couldn't agree with Jim Buck that he was partners with a road agent. Daggett somehow wasn't that kind of man. Anyway, there was nothing to do but wait and let things happen. Two days passed while Chester and I sat in the eating room and played two-handed stud. Now we got mighty restless. Late afternoon of the second day, however, Jim Buck drove back with his stage. The travelers came in first, went to their rooms, and then Jim came over to say hello. I wish I had a job like yours. Nothing to do but sit around, play cards, drink whiskey. Well, we do a lot of thinking, Jim. That's what makes up for it. You do, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, you done any about finding Jesse Daggett's friend? Nat Pilcher? Well, if we did find him, Jim, we couldn't prove anything. No, neither could I, I guess. But you might just shoot him for luck. <laughs> You're too suspicious, Jim. He was probably just some cowboy riding through. Maybe. There's another pilgrim for supper. Hey, where's Daggett, anyway? Well, he went outside just after you pulled in. Didn't you see him? I was busy with the horses. And I still got work to do. I'll see you at supper. You know, that's a hard life, driving a stage, Mr. Dillon. I don't think I'd want to do that. Well, you might give it a try first, Chester. Ah, wait a minute. I heard there was a marshal here. Yeah, that's right. What can I do for you? Me? You can't do nothing for me, marshal. No? Well, then what do you want? I just wanted to see what a marshal looks like. A live one. <sighs> Satisfied? Sure. And get out of here. You're touchy, Marshal. Real touchy. But I don't want him to start no trouble. I want to come in to say hello. Friendly like. What's your name? Pilcher. Nat Pilcher. I thought so. Sure. I'm a friend of Jesse Daggett's. An old friend. Where do you live, Pilcher? You got a job around here? I'm a cowboy, Marshal. Know anybody needs a good hand? Oh, well, what do you do besides ride? Funny. You ask that. Is it? You being a lawman, dear. 
Ever hear of Charlie Hall, sheriff over in New Mexico? I have. They say Clay Allison shot him. That's what they say, Marshal. But I know for a fact it wasn't Clay. Nice meeting you, Marshal. See you later. <laughs> How are morning appetites at your house? Well, if they're pretty drowsy, here's a real good way to wake them up. Set a bowl full of Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, at everybody's place. Just watch your folks take notice when they eat dog, I see. Yeah. I hope you won't regret it, Dagan. Toast it in. Bet your whole tribe will agree with you. Post Toasties are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. And here's a thought, if you'd like to make a good thing even better. Try topping Post Toasties with your favorite fruit. You'll find that's a mighty good way to start the day. Fact is, it's a downright delicious way. So next time you shop, be sure to ask for Post Toasties. They're the heat good cornflakes. You'll see. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heat good cornflakes. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. Now back to gun smoke. Jesse Daggett's stage station lay on the prairie miles from anywhere. It would be an easy thing for a man like Nat Pilcher to ride in long enough to check on a stagecoach and the value of its cargo, and then ride up the road a few miles and wait for it. But I still didn't believe Daggett was in on the deal, even though he and Pilcher had obviously known each other somewhere before. The next morning at dawn, Jim Buck loaded his passengers aboard and pulled out. Daggett and I stood there and watched the little cloud of dust as it moved up the Santa Fe Trail toward Wagon Bed Springs. Make Dodge tonight and he'll be back here tomorrow. I, uh, met your friend, Nat Pilcher, last night, Daggett. Pilcher rode out before supper. Yeah, I know. Seems like he only came in to tell me what a hard case he is. To warn me about it. it. Didn't have much effect. You're still here. Uh, you don't think I scare that easy. <laughs> You're all right, Marshal. Things will work out here without you. Daggett, I don't know what's going on down here, and if I'm meddling in your affairs, I'm sorry, but uh, a stage has been robbed and a man's been killed, and that makes it my affair, too. I want to thank you for not thinking I got anything to do with all that, Marshal. Well, I wasn't sure at first. But I am now. Even so, I'm not going back to Dodge without a man. No. No, I suppose you won't. Well, let's go inside. Huh? Sure. You, uh, ought to plant some trees there, Daggett. It'd sure improve the place. Not enough water. I'll dig for it, then. You'll never get a woman to come out here and marry you unless you've at least got some trees. How's that? <laughs> There's no offense. I was just remarking that... Women like things growing around the place. Let's say I meant it uh, generally. No offense. I thought to have a woman here once when I first planned about running a stage station. That was over in New Mexico. Seems like a long time ago. Oh, things don't always work out. Yeah, I was mighty fond of her, Marshal. But I lost her. I've been a little lonely ever since. Oh, you came close. That's better than some men do. I don't know about that. But it is funny how a man goes right on living, even when his luck's about run out. Yeah. Yeah. Come on inside. I'll heat up some coffee. Good. <laughs> Got him, Chester. Mr. Dillon, 
Do you mind if we don't play anymore? I'm beginning to see things. <laughs> it's okay with me. Uh, the stage ought to be here soon anyway. And just think, Jim Buck's been all the way to Dodge and back, and we've just been sitting here another two days. Well, waiting's always the hardest part. Well, there's a stage now. At least there'll be some people around here. Yeah. Hello, Jim. Come out here, Marshal. What? More trouble, Jim? He stopped me again, Marshal. By heaven, I'm going after him now if you don't. Take a look in the coach here. Why? What's the woman? Is she dead, Jim? Of course she's dead. She's got a bullet in her. Where are your other passengers? There ain't any. She's the only one this trip. Look at her, Marshal. He killed her. And there's some blood soaking through your jacket, Jim. You hit bad. In the shoulder. Knocked me off the box. I wasn't going to stop at all. And then he just rode up and put a bullet in her and rode off. Never said a word. You think it was Pilcher? Well, let's ask Jesse Daggett here who it was. No. Take a look in the coach, Daggett. Take a good look. Well, Daggett, what do you think of killing women? Look at him, Marshal. I told you. Did you ever see a guiltier looking man? You're wrong, Jim. Doesn't even make sense. Well, he didn't do it. No. But he's in on it somehow. Chester, I'll help you bring the woman inside. And then we'll see what we can do about your shoulder, Jim. Come on. It doesn't make sense. None at all. But I figured it would soon. And after I did what I could for Jim Buck's shoulder, Chester and I buried the woman, put a cross over her grave. We'd find out later who she was. The rest of the night, we took turns watching for a move from Jesse Daggett. And sure enough, an hour before dawn, he saddled up and rode out into the prairie. We let him get a little start and then took a couple of his horses and followed him. You think he's going to meet Pilcher? If he can find him. We must have come ten miles already. Yeah, about that. We shouldn't have let him get so far ahead of us, though. So. Well, we're right on his trail. Yeah, I know. Hey, what's that up there? Huh? Look. What's the man? Yeah, come on. Come on. Whoa. Whoa. What's Daggett, Mr. Dillon? He's been shot. Yeah. You followed me, Marshal. How bad are you hurt, Daggett? Pretty bad. Pilcher? I'd have killed him, but my gun didn't go off. And he got me easy then. No luck left at all. Right? Any idea where Pilcher is now, Daggett? Said he was going back to the station to get you. Took my horse with him. I'd have come with you this morning. Wasn't your business. This was between me and Pilcher. I'm here looking for a fight. I didn't want to kill anybody no more. Not even him. So he drove me to it. Finally, that woman yesterday. No, I couldn't stand that. You mean he shot her and the other passenger just to prod you into a fight? Marshal, I, I'll tell you now. But I had a woman out in New Mexico. Nat Pilcher tried to run off with her. I didn't shoot him, though. I shot her instead. I figured it made more sense. You killed her? I don't think he'd have minded so much if I'd have killed him, but I figured he wasn't doing nothing I didn't want to do myself. I didn't blame him none. I blamed her. Bilch has been after me ever since. I could have stopped all this if you'd told me sooner. Daddy. Every man's got to kill his own snakes, Marshal. I tried. You can have them now. I ain't gonna live long. I'm sorry, Daggett. Uh, Chester will stay with you. 
I'm going back to the station. We both go. I can die alone. I ain't afraid. No. Goodbye, Daggett. Bye, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir. Do what you can for him. Poor fellow. I'll send somebody out to help you bring him in later. Yes, sir. It's about time you got here, Martin. Where's Pilcher, Jim? Job back, looking for whiskey. Where's everybody else? It's been a busy morning. How's your shoulder? It hurts. I gotta get up to Dodge somehow and see it. See. Morning, Marshal. Oh. Hello, Pilcher. You been riding? So have you. Man like me rides a lot, Marshal. You should have kept going. On to see you again before I left. That's what Jesse Daggett told me. I'm gonna kill you. And then Jim here. Oh, no, wait a minute. Shut up, Jim. Pilcher, you can drop your gun belt and take your chances in court. If you like. Our chances are better right here, Mark. It's your choice. It's always been my choice. Except for the night Jesse Daggett shot his wife. Did he tell you about that? It doesn't matter now. To me, it does. You... No! You killed him, Marshal. Yeah. You hit? No. What's this all about, anyway? A woman. Jim, I'm going to hitch up the stage and drive you into Dodge. Yeah. I'd be grateful for that. Morning. We'll have to go out of our way some. Oh? Huh? Why? Daggett's luck ran all the way out this morning. That's why. Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gun Smoke. Dodge City and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say, if there ever was a cereal designed to boost a family's breakfast morale, it's new sugar crinkles. Why, that sugar rice treat that's just right sweet makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Come breakfast time, just pour on milk and you got a breakfast main dish as you like it. Those golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice we call sugar crinkles are really special. Not too sweet, the way some sugar-coated cereals seem to be, and not like others that don't seem sweet enough. Sugar crinkles really are the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And whether you eat them from the bowl for breakfast, from the pack as a snack, or both ways, you love sugar crinkles. Try them soon. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. I 
one thing about Dodge being quiet like this, there's time for fishing. Ah, beer, steak, and catfish stew makes for a good supper. You two are going to be sick, stuffing yourselves that way. Well, now, Kitty, Chester spent all day catching these fish. He's got a right to eat what he wants. I've heard of people who go to bed with an aspidity bag around their necks when they eat too heavy. I'd rather be sick. <laughs> oh, it's not so bad. Once you're used to it, it kind of lulls you to sleep. It, more coffee, Miss Kitty? Uh, no, thanks, Chester. It's late. I'd better get back to my place. You're a good cook, Chester. Oh, say, thank you. Yeah, if you ever get tired of the law business, Chester, maybe you could get a job at Delmonico. <laughs> the regular customers might get a little tired of catfish stew, Matt. <laughs> Come on, Kitty. I'll walk you back. All right. Uh, will I see you in the morning, Mr. Dillon? I'll be at the office early, and I want to ride out to Jim Redico's place and look at a horse. Can I go with you? Uh, sure. Maybe you'll see something you'd like to have. Uh, we'll leave early before it gets too hot. Good night. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Miss Kitty. Good night. Redigo's place is going to look kind of nice. All them trees growing up around the house that way. Yeah, he's done pretty good in a year's time. Of course, it's a long way out of Dodge. Now you need space to raise good horses, Chester. Yes, sir, I know, but it must get mighty lonesome out here. I don't think that bothers Jim much. Looks from here like his corrals and cat's pens are empty, Mr. Dillon. Well, maybe he's moved his horses out to get the last of the summer grass. Mm. You got any special horse in mind? Well, the last time he was in Dodge, Jim was bragging up a sorrel stud he's got. It might take $30 for him. Well, good horses come high, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Now, let's pull up here. The horses will stand. Quiet like, isn't it? Jim? Jim, ready to go. Maybe he's not here. Well, he can't have gone far. He didn't even push the door shut. I guess he won't mind if we go in and boil up a pot of coffee. There's a pot already on the stove. Yeah, looks like he was just about to fry up some side meat. Pot's full. Yeah, Jim must have spent the night away from here. The stove's cold, Chester. Well, maybe he had early this morning. Now, this stove hasn't been lit for longer than that. A man doesn't leave side meat lying uncooked in a skillet. Mm. It sure don't figure, Mister Dillon. Ah. Oh. I ain't on, Mister. Don't, don't shoot. What? Don't shoot me. But, but nobody's gonna shoot you, old man. Well, come on in. I, I seen you right up. I was hiding out back. Well, who are you? I'm Jed Cuff. What are you doing here? I worked for young Jim Redigo, but not anymore. What are you talking about? They come riding up and they killed Jim. Two nights ago it was. I was hiding, but I I got hungry and I came in to get something to eat. Redigo's dead? Laying dead against the water trough out back. They shot him. Can I eat something? Who shot him? The men who come to take the horses. They killed Jim, and then they run his horses off. Jim tried to fight them, but it was two of them against the one of him. Well, I thought you were here. I run away. I was scared. Cold coffee is better on the empty stomach. He's coming out of his head, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Uh, old man. Jed Cuff, that's me. Well, show us where Jim is, huh? Uh, I ain't a brave man, mister. I I run away from all them guns. That's okay, Jed. You'll just take us to Jim. Out back. That's where he's laying. I'll show you. But before he died, mister, Jim killed one of them horse thieves dead. He's laying out here, too. 
You think this old man's telling the truth, Mr. Dillon? Well, as straight as he can remember it, Chester. It's just that he's old and not very bright anyway. There he is. There's Jim. And there's the other fellow laying right where Jim shot him out of his saddle. Uh, Jim was a fine boy. But I was scared, and I ran out the back way and hid where they couldn't see me. Jed, did you know these two men? Had you ever seen them before? No, mister, I never. Uh, uh, just to see if you can find the shovel. It took less than an hour to bury Jim Redigo and the other man. When we were through, Jed put a sort of marker on each grave, and we went into the house. Chester and I found some food in the cupboard, and we fed the old man. Then we started him for Dodge. Happy enough, a strident old donkey we found grazing free behind the house. Jim Redigo! Maybe he's not here. They can't have gone far following the two-day-old sign of the stolen horses. About sundown, we saw a long column of riders moving towards the north. What do you think it is, Mr. Dillon? Well, it could be cavalry out of Fort Larned. Or maybe Indians? Or Indians. If it is Indians, we ought to get out of here. Are they riding too slow to be a war party, Chester? Uh, it's Indians, all right. Cavalry wouldn't circle that way. Then we're going to go right up to them? Well, if we can. Hey, look, they've stopped. Yeah. How many you figure there are? Oh, uh, maybe 60, 70. Might be a whole Indian village on the move. If it is, they're not looking for trouble. I hope not. And they're waiting for us, all right. Now, when we get up to them, keep both your hands on the saddle horn. Yes, sir. Sitting there, looking at us. They'll talk when they're ready. I am Quick Knife. My name is Matt Dillon. Uh, my braves and I have watched you come. You are looking for the white man. That's right. The white man sold us horses. Our squaws ride them now. He stole those horses from another white man. We bought the horses with gold. He killed a man when he stole. You have come to take back the horses and punish the man. Yeah. Uh, the horses you cannot take. The man you must find for yourself. The horses are ours now. There are two of you. And many of us. All right, Quick Knife. Uh, what about the man? He left the horses with us and rode west. His name is Tebow. How long ago? Not long. He knows someone is following him, and he is afraid. His trail will not be hard to follow. Thank you, Quick Knife. Just a I wonder if they're going to try Don't look anything. back. Well. Now, what were you going to say? Nothing. Only they're still just sitting back there on their horses, Mr. Dillon, watching us. Yeah. I was just a mite scared. Was you? Yeah, I think maybe I was. Well. <laughs> Are we going to track Kibo now, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. We'll track him, Chester. And we'll find him. If you're
your family is getting weary of the same old breakfast cereal every morning, time to retire it and introduce him to New Sugar Crinkles. Say, New Sugar Crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And I'm here to tell you, Sugar Crinkles make breakfast more fun than a circus. Golden crisp nuggets of sugar-coated rice. And every nugget in your breakfast bowl, just right sweet. Forget your experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet. And with others that don't seem sweet enough. Treat yourself and your favorite family to new sugar crinkles at breakfast time and snack time, too. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be beat. Sugar rice beat that's just right sweet. With milk, what a breakfast joy. That's a snack from the pack. Oh, boy. Can't be beat. Just right sweet. Sugar crinkles. Good to eat. Now back to... Gun smoke. Soon after we left the Indians, night came and we couldn't track Tebow any farther. The next day, we rode hard, following his trail towards the west. The prairie stretched out gray and green before us. And several times out on the horizon, we saw puffs of dust rising. We knew Tebow was somewhere ahead of us. He must have been riding a good animal because when dust came, we hadn't closed in on him. It was dark when we spotted a nester's cabin and pulled up. You think maybe he's hiding out in there, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he could be. Just keep your eyes open. Well, but who knows? We can't track him at night. Don't you think maybe he'd just keep it going? Well, any man's got to sleep and eat sometime, Chester. Yes, yeah, sir, that's true. What do you want? I thought maybe we could get some food and water our horses. Who are you? And my name's Dillon. We don't have many strangers out here. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Well, I've got some tater soup working. Well, thank you. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. How do, ma'am? Just sit at the table there. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, you're a long ways... You're a widow woman? No. It's just the boy that died. Maybe that's why my man and I stopped here. He built this place. Here you are. Ah, thank you. Say, this is real stout soup. Where is your husband? Hunting. Uh Uh-huh. Well... Night hunting's a pretty poor thing, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes the body don't have much choice. When will your husband be back? You're asking a lot of questions, mister. I told you I'm a U.S. Marshal. People have good luck and bad. Ours has been mostly bad. Yeah. I'm looking for a man called Tebow. I don't know him. Well, yours is the only place we've seen he came this way. My man's name is Kirch. Abe Kirch. We don't know anybody called Tebow. Ah. Well, uh, thank you, Miss Kirch. We'll water our horses and get moving. Get moving? Thank you, ma'am. It was mighty tasty soup. You riding on now, ain't you? Yes, that's right. You can water your horses right out there in front. Good night. Good night. Well, one thing, she wasn't too talky of a woman, at least. Not living out here so long, maybe she's lost her habit. Yeah, maybe. This cussed buckskin can drink more water than a Texas mule. Yeah, they've had. 
had enough. All right, let's ride. Oh. Oh. Mr. Dillon? Hi. Uh. Soon after we left the Indians, night came, and we couldn't track Tebo any farther. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right, hold up. Hold up. Now, let's get these horses hobbled. Oh, I think they'll stand, Mr. Dillon. And I want to make sure they do. Yes, sir. And then we'll walk back to the Nestor's cabin. Walk back? Well, what in the world for? That woman said her husband was out hunting. But there was a Sharps 50 leaning in the corner. A man doesn't go hunting and leave his gun home. All right, come on. It could be Mr. Kirch took another gun with him. He's too poor to have another gun. Well, where do you think he is? I don't know, but there's something wrong back there, Chester. His wife was mighty anxious to be rid of us. Usually it's hard for a traveler to break away. The people are so hungry for news and a little talk. I guess that's right. Yeah. Now watch where you put your feet. Yes, sir. It only took a few minutes to make our way back to the Nestor's cabin, where a pale light showed through the chinking and under the door. Some 30 feet short of the cabin, we stopped. We could hear voices inside. I motioned to Chester, and we stretched out flat against the ground, and then inched our way closer. Now we could make out it was a man and woman talking. One voice was Miss Kirch. The other was either her husband or Tebow. Oh, he said that. He ain't hurt bad. There's blood on his face. I hit him to keep him from talking out. He'd come around. I got rid of those two men like you told me. Is that him? He said you Mr. wouldn't hurt Abe if I did that. Evil? Wait a minute, Chester. I just hit him on the head now. Shut up. We ain't never harmed nobody. I did what you said and not... It... I told you to shut up. You open your mouth again and I'll fix your husband good. <laughs> Get your food out on that table. Got to have me something to take along. <laughs> Chester, he's busy now packing up that food. Crawl around to the back of the cabin and then make some noise. What sort of a noise? It doesn't matter. Just so he knows somebody's out back. Well, then what? I don't know yet. I'll get going. That's fine. You take all that? What we gonna eat? So hungry. Those men here were the law, weren't they? One man said he was a marshal. They've been following you. You must have done something bad, real bad. I killed a man who talked too much, woman. And I just... Oh. Oh. Come about that. Please, don't shut up. Oh. I'm going out. Don't you make a sound or I'll come back for you. All right, Tebow, drop it. What? I can see you, Tebow. Drop your gun or I'll kill you. Well, now, uh, uh, hold on, mister. Let's, uh, let's talk a minute, You huh? can't shoot at my voice. Now, drop it. No, I won't. Bad you had to kill him. But then they'd have hung him for a horse thief anyway. Yeah. And he killed Jim Ledigo, too, Mr. Dillon. Forget it, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, we better get into the cabin. There's nothing we can do out here. We did what we could to make Kirch rest comfortable. And then sat up half the night talking to his wife about uh, Dodge, the railroad. It could be Mr. Cutter gun with him. He's too poor to have another gun. Well, where do you think he is? I don't know, but the state Chester and I started on the ride back to Dodge. It was clear and bright and 
We made good time. Chester riding along, feeling mighty proud. The Nestor had said he couldn't feed another horse, and so Chester was trading his own buckskin and riding the big red stud that Tebow had been using. Yeah, Chester was mighty pleased with life. And Tebow, who had stolen the stud a few days earlier from Jim Radigo, was buried out on the prairie with stones piled on his grave to keep off the coyotes. Now, Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. It's easy to do your whole tribe a big favor, Mother. Just for every big and little Indian in your camp, a breakfast bowl full of Post Toasties. Post Toasties, you know, are the heap good cornflakes. They're the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Fresh as fresh can be. Say, Post Toasties are crackling crisp. Sweet kernel corn flavor, toasted. That's Post Toasties. Post Toasties are packed with nourishment, too. A bowl of Post Toasties with sugar and milk helps your big braves and little Indians start the day right. Get Post Toasties soon. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. <laughs> Stranger in Dodge, Marshal. Well, I've only been gone a week, Sam. Hey, you got any rye left? Kitty over there has got the last bottle, Marshal. Oh? I'll have some tomorrow when Santa Fe gets in. Good. Meanwhile, I'll see if I can talk Kitty out of a drink. Sure. I heard you were back, Matt. How are you? Hey, you been saving that bottle for me, Kitty? You know, I never drink rye. <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's the closest I've been to civilization in the week. Did you find what you're after? Yeah, I found him. Yeah. What's that stuff you're drinking? What? Here. Keep the bottle on the floor. Looks better. Let me see that. Professor Bones Wonder Medicine. Celebrated vegetable pulmonic detergent. Well, I hope it tastes better than it reads, Kitty. (laughs) Tastes fine, Matt. Makes you feel fine, too. Essential oil of worm seed, a new and valuable curative. Professor Bone, Ph.D., and Pulmist. Professor of Practical and Medical Botany, Natural and Civil History. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Why in the world you get a hold of this? Well, everybody's taking it, Matt. Oh, I forgot you were away when Professor Bone arrived. Huh? You mean he's here in Dodge? Sure. Came last Thursday. Got a fancy wagon they lecture from every day. But this time, as a matter of fact, you should hear him, Matt. He's great. Yeah, yeah. He must be. No, he really is. Well, what's in that tonic, Kitty? You're kind of misty already. Makes you feel great, Matt. 
Try some. Here. Uh, no, 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 thanks. I, I don't need any worm seed oil. Liquor does me all the harm I need. You'll buy some once you've heard him talk. He's awful smart, Matt. Yeah, yeah, he must be. He's a professor. It says so on the bottle there. I don't care if he's a professor or not. He makes wonderful tonic. Yeah, I can see he does. Oh, uh, Matt? Oh, I'm glad you're back. Yes, you come with me. Oh, uh, hello, Doc. Sit down. No, you? you come with me. Outside. I want you to see this spectacle. Huh? Oh, well, what are you talking about? By this red-nosed old scarecrow, Loot Bone. He ought to be tarred and feathered, that's what. Oh, look. Look right there. There's a bottle of... Kitty, that's yours. It's good, Doc. Real good. I'm going to smash this bottle in the street. No. And if I find you drinking any more of it, I'll paddle you. That's what I'll do. Really, Doc? Oh. Oh, you see. You see what it does to people? Come on, Matt. Okay, Doc. I might as well find out what this is all about. You'll excuse us. Kidding? You, not Doc. I mean what I said, Kitty. Boy. Yeah, let's go, Doc. Uh, uh, there, there's his wagon. And look at that crowd of fools. Well, what's so wrong with it, Doc? I'll tell you later. First, I want you to hear him talk. The man's demented, that's what. Ah, uh, there he is, Matt, yes. You see, standing in the back of his wagon there. Yes. He's finished entertaining them now. We're just in time for the serious part. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I discovered the formula for this famous elixir while serving as personal surgeon to the king of Santo Del Rio. Oh, that liar. Is he, Let's listen. Professor Bones' wonder medicine has cured more than 3,000 cases of ague, 2,500 of chronic inflammatory rheumatism, 2,000 of green sickness, 1,000 of mercurial diseases, 1,500 of liver infections, and 6,000 of general debility. Matt, he ought to be hung. It purifies, cleanses, and strengthens the fountain springs of life and infuses new vigor throughout the entire body. In fact, my friends, Professor Bones' wonder medicine will cure all disorders incident to the human race, without exception, no matter what the age, circumstance, or place of residence of the afflicted patient. Hey, Professor, I live over in the stinking springs. Will it cure me? <laughs> You're drunk. What a day ever since I was weaned, Professor. I pity you, my friend. Professor, when I was 12, I got drunk and went to sleep at a hackerberry tree. I never did find out how I got down. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, don't. Don't laugh. Pity the poor man, the poor wretch. Whiskey has him crushed in its foul trap. His eyes roomy, his brains awash, his manhood's gone. Are you shut up? Whiskey, I tell you. Whiskey did it. Any more talk about me, I'll put a bullet in you, Professor. Evil man, drunken specter. I'm telling you, no more. No, no more. No. Ladies and gentlemen, about to appear on the wagon beside me is a man you all know and respect. One of your finest and most worthy citizens. A man whose very presence contributes mightily to the progress of your fair town. A man whose soul is pure, but whose body, ah, whose body has been the host of five separate diseases, any one of which would soon have been fatal. But now he is saved. Three bottles of Professor Bones' wonder medicine has done it. And, and here he is to tell you of this miraculous cure in his own words. Step forward, sir, and speak. Speak for the sake of your fellow man. Great heavens, Matt. It's Chester. Chester. Oh, Mr. Dunn. Get on from there. Why, yes, sir. But my dear sir... You've got to talk to the people. Hurry it up, Chester. Well, who are you, sir? Where are you going now? I'm going to no, come back here, you. Come back. Just go on with your lecture, Professor. Never mind about him. You should pick the wrong fine citizen, Professor. 
Hey, Professor? Yes, but This here stuff of yours will cure anything? Anything, my friend. Every disorder known to the medical faculty. Well, my old man is 80, and he's got a beam stuck in his throat. Oh, <laughs> no, I shut up all of you. It's for two. How about it, Professor Willis? I'll come to see your father, sir. I'll visit him as soon as I'm able to pass a few bottles down among the good people gathered here. Uh, thanks. Hello, Mr. Dillon. Doc? Come on, let's get out of here. Yes. Of all people. I suppose he's got you all doped up with that stuff, too, Chester? Oh, it makes you feel great, Doc. Is that why you were up there? No, sir. I got a deal with the professor. He pays me $2.50 a day and gives me all the medicine I can drink. Free. It's idiots like you that made it possible for such quackery, Chester? Now, here, Doc, I'm not an idiot. You've been acting like one, but that's not what's important. Matt, I've analyzed some of Bone's so-called medicine. It's got opium in it, for one thing. Well, do you think it's dangerous, Doc? Of course it is. People can get in the habit, and what's worth is something is wrong with them, and they're taking the stuff they wouldn't find out until it's too late. You've got to stop this business, Matt. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Doc. Either you stop him or... Or by heaven, I'll shoot him. Now, I'm serious, Matt. All right, Doc, all right. I'll talk to him a little later. And meantime, you stay away from him, Chester. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. I didn't know. All right, hold it, Sam. Hold it. Uh, Professor Bone, I'd like to have a word with you. Who are you, sir? I'm a U.S. Marshal. Now, uh, let's sit at a table over there, huh? Come on. I'm at your service, Marshal. Watch you sit down. Thank you. And uh, to what do I owe this honor, sir? It, uh... Isn't exactly an honor, Professor. I want you to stop putting opium in that stuff you're selling. Oh, well, come now, Marshal. Surely you don't believe Doc me. Adams has analyzed it, Professor, and either you make it harmless or I'm going to run you out of Dodge. <coughs> yes, yes, I believe you would. Now, you're free to sell it and you're free to do all the talking you want, but that's all. I'm, I'm a lonely old man, Marshal, and I'm tired of wandering. I'll do what you say. Good. I, uh, hope you don't get into trouble with your preaching about liquor, Professor. I have been fighting against drink ever since I was a youth. Oh? Well, what about opium? Isn't that just as bad? Well, I don't sell enough to do any harm, Marshal. Maybe, but why are you so strong about whiskey? When I was a child of 12, my grandfather got drunk and threw a pet owl onto a horse that was standing nearby. What? And he did... And it frightened the horse into kicking an orphan boy. Broke the rim of his belly. That boy died, Marshal. Oh, oh, I see. Professor Bone? Ah, Mr. Reeves. Welcome, sir. And how is your good father? Marshal, I'm glad you're here. Oh, what's the trouble, Reeves? This here now, Professor, he's a trouble. I'll tell you. My old man, he had a bean stuck in his throat. The professor told me to give him a steam bath and then throw cold water on him. And I was doing it. Oh, what for? I suppose he'd catch cold and get a cough and bring up the bean. Oh, well, of all... But it didn't work, Mr. Reeves? It killed him. It what? My old man is dead. Dead? Good heavens, poor fellow. Now, I'm going to kill you, Professor. No, you're not. No, but no man can die of a mere cold, Mr. Reeves. 
Some, something must have gone wrong. Something went wrong, wrong. all right. Uh, come on. We'll get dark and go see what this is all about. And you'll get the idea of shooting anybody out of your head, Reese. Maybe I will. <laughs> What goes on at your house at breakfast? Well, you can take it from me. The best thing that can go on to your breakfast table is Post Toasties. Yes, sir, Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Those golden crisp cornflakes are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. You know how to prove it? Just pour out breakfast bowlfuls of Post Toasties for your whole tribe. Then watch how they enjoy them. Post Toasties are crisp and tasty. From the first bite down to the last spoonful, that sweet kernel corn flavor makes your breakfast. So always ask for Post Toasties, the heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. Remember, Post Toasties is one of the famous triple wrap. Post cereals, guaranteed fresh, or triple your money back. Now back to Gunsmoke. <laughs> Professor Bone wasn't a normal, everyday type citizen. But he wasn't a murderer, either. And whatever had gone wrong and killed Reeves' father couldn't be blamed entirely on him. Reeves had been a fool to follow his advice in the first place. Doc told him so, too, in as many ways as he could think of. We found the old man still lying in the steam bath Reeves had made. All he'd done was to dig a big hole in the ground with a fire pit in the middle and then stretch some canvas across the top for a roof. Doc climbed down into it, and after a few minutes, he came back out again. Uh, well, Reeves, all I can figure is your father died of a heart attack. I don't believe it, Doc. That old man was strong as a bull. Well, I know that, but there's nothing else that could have caused it. How long did you have him in there, Reeves? Oh, maybe half hour, Marshal. He was having a fine time when I left him. He poured a whole jug of vinegar on them rocks. I went up to the house to get some more. Oh, wait a minute. What'd you say? Uh, vinegar? Sure. Professor here said it'd help him to sweat. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I thought so. Well, it's the vinegar that killed him, Reeves. What do you mean? That's limestone you used in there, isn't it? Well, limestone is All right. You put vinegar on hot limestone, and it'll make acid gas. Well, and that's what suffocated your pa. I'll be... A... I, I didn't tell you to use limestone, Mr. Reeves. No, you, you can't blame me for that. No, but the vinegar was your idea, Professor, and I still say you murdered him. Now, wait a minute, Reeves. You're not being sensible. This thing was an accident, that's all. Huh? I'm not a murderer. I never hurt anybody in my you life. You don't even know what you do, you old fake. Selling that slop of yours loaded with narcotics. Did you tell him to stop that, Matt? Yeah, yeah, Doc. He said he would. My medicine is as pure as the dew, gentlemen. A newborn babe could drink Don't it. let me catch you giving Sandy newborn babes. I'm going to analyze it every day you're here. And I hope that won't be much longer. Oh, I'm a lonely old man, sir. The only home I have is in my wagon. Well, then go live in it somewhere else. Huh? You've caused enough trouble around here. Doc, take it easy on him. But am I to be banished from the face of the earth? Am I not a man like any other man? Do you think I have no heart, no feelings? No soul? Oh, why don't you just shut up and get out of here? I want to bury my old man. 
I would gladly help you in that task, Mr. No, Lee. sir. No, sir, not you. Not by a long sight. You are unkind, sir. Gentlemen, I take my leave of you. Good day. For some reason, the three of us stood there in silence and watched Professor Bone walk away. He stopped once and glanced back at us for a moment. Probably that would be the last that we'd see of him. Dodge was fairly quiet that night. And when somebody reported seeing a fire of some kind out on the prairie, I decided I might as well ride out and have a look. There's no flames left, Mr. Dillon. I guess it must be all burned out. I don't remember a house of any kind around here. I wonder what it was. Well, maybe just a prairie fire that didn't get really started. Yeah. Oh, there's something, Chester. Over there. Yeah. I can see a few coals. Hold on. Why, it's a wagon, Mr. Dillon. It's all burned up. That's Professor Bone's wagon, Chester. I can only see you're right. That's his horse, too. Professor! Professor Bone? Now, let's take a look here. Where in the world could he be, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Uh, uh, Look out now. I'm going to move some of this. I'll help you. Look right there. Yeah. You think that's a professor? I'm afraid so, Chester. Poor old fella. He must have been asleep and his wagon caught fire. Maybe. Funny he couldn't get out, though. Unless he was drunk or something. Professor Bone didn't drink, Chester. That's right, I forgot. He sure didn't. Say, you think maybe somebody did this, Mr. Dillon? Well, he had two or three men pretty mad at him. Yeah, or or maybe it was Indians. Oh, not this close to Dodge. No. No, I guess not. I don't know, Chester. A lot of things can happen to people who get too lonely. Oh, come on, let's get out of here. We'll take care of him in the morning. Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Take it easy, Mom. You know your young folks are going to eat when you give them sugar crinkles for breakfast. Yes, boys and girls love sugar crinkles. And no wonder, it's the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Now, the reason sugar crinkles suit young folks to a tea is this. 
Some sugar-coated cereals they've tried seem too sweet. Others don't seem sweet enough. But when they dip their first spoonful of sugar crinkles, mmm, they've discovered a sugar-coated cereal that's just right sweet. And say, those young folks of yours love to dip into the pack and eat sugar crinkles as a snack, too. So better get several packages. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. I got a horse's saddle, Mr. Dillon. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole hog. And all the hog you got this morning's cooking on that stick right there, Chester. Is it done? <laughs> that depends on how hungry you are. It's done. <laughs> sure will be good to get back to Dodge tonight and sleep in a bed again. Well, civilization's made you soft, Chester. Mm-hmm. Maybe so, but I get mighty tired of using my back for a mattress and my belly for a covering. <laughs> Obviously, Chester, you were born for greater things than rooting around on the prairie and living in the rain. It hasn't been raining, Mr. Dillon. No, no, it hasn't. But it will, Chester. Sooner or later, it'll rain. Yes, sir. Wish we brought some more bacon. Say, don't old man Granby live around here? Maybe we could borrow a little from him. Well, according to what I've always heard, old Granby wouldn't loan anybody anything. Mm. You really think he's a rich miser, like to say? Oh, I don't know, Chester. Sometimes a man's entirely different from his reputation. I only met Granby once or twice. He seemed like a nice enough old fellow, though. Well, I wouldn't want to live out here all alone with nothing but a few horses for company. Oh, he's used to it. Well, even if he does have a lot of money hid away, there's no place to spend it out here. Granby's pretty old for the pleasures Dodge has to offer, Chester. Well, I hope I am never that old. At the rate you're burning yourself out, Chester, you never will be, so don't worry about it. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, I live mighty quiet for a young fellow who's free and still full of blood. <laughs> sure. Hey... Look over there. Huh? Now that string of dust laying right on the ground there. Yeah, I've been watching it, Chester. It's not on the ground, though. There's a dry wash runs along there. Somebody's driving stock down it. Maybe it's old man Granby. That may be. Let's go say hello, huh? All right, sir. If it is old man Granby, we... Might just ask him about a little bacon, huh? Well, we can ask. There's no harm in that. Oh. Now, that's horses down there, Chester. Yes, sir. I can see their heads now. I don't see anybody driving them. Now, he'll be along in a minute. Now, let's wait here. There he comes. Yeah. Hello! He stopped. That's not old Granby. Let's ride down and say hello anyway. Oh. Now that's Granby's brand on those horses, though. He must have hired him a hand. Yeah, maybe. Working for Granby? I ain't working for nobody, mister. Oh? And where is he? Where is who? Granby. I don't know no Granby. Well, those are his horses you're driving. Oh, they are? Yeah. I ain't driving them. What do you mean? 
they got ahead of me in the wash here, that's all. I see. You a cowboy? Yeah, sure. I'm a cowboy. Well, how you don't look like one. You don't ride like one, either. You're asking the questions, mister. No decent cowboy would run another man's horses down a dry wash just because he didn't want to get up on the bank and ride around them. I told you, they got in front of them, is all. How come you're not carrying a gun? Does a man have to carry a gun? No. I'll bet you're the only man within a thousand miles of here who isn't carrying one. Maybe I got a better conscience than the rest of you. Maybe. Look, mister, you've run those horses about five miles off of old Granby's place. You want to give us a hand, we'll run them back. I'm in a hurry. It won't take long. The old man might be a couple of days finding them if we don't. You worry about him. I got to get in to Dodge. We'll ride in with you. Afterwards. I ain't going to do it. Look a lot better if you did. I, uh, I'd like to, mister, but I can't wait. I'm leaving now. So long. You gonna let him go, Mr. Wait a minute, Chester. I'll let him hear what lead sounds like. Now, don't shoot! Don't shoot me! All right, then ride back here. Don't kill me, mister. I'm not gonna kill you. Unless you try to run away. Why would I try to run away? You just did. Chester. Yes, sir? Ride down the bank and have those horses off. Start them back up the wash. We'll be out of here by the time they're back. All right, Mr. Dillon. You stay right close to me, fella. And don't try anything smart. When we get to Granby's, if he says it's okay, then you can go wherever you like. I don't know Granby. Never been there. Well, we'll show you the way. Come on, let's get up on the bank. Old man Granby can find his horses all right now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but I want this cowboy here to meet him. We'll see if he's in the house. I'll wait for you. Get off that horse, fella. Go on. That's better. Come on. We'll take a look. What are you waiting for? Nothing. You go ahead, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Looks like I'll have to herd this man in. You've been kind of balky ever since we ran into you, mister. I don't like being dragged around. I never did. I just want you to meet old Granby. He'll be grateful for you. Help him run his horses back here. I know what you think, mister. You think I was stealing them horses. Well, I never heard of the old man. I was never near this place. Yeah, so you told me. But you're here now. I ain't afraid of you or nobody. Then let's go into the house. Come on. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Old man Granby, he... He's in there. Well, what's wrong? Right in the room there, Mr. Dillon. He's hanging there. What? Somebody's gone and hung him right in his own house. I, I don't want to see him anymore. You go take a look. Pull your gun and hold it on this man, Chester. If he makes a move, shoot him. Yes. Now, you just stand there real quiet like. I ain't going to do nothing. You sure ain't. Just because I... Happened to be in the country, it don't mean I killed nobody. Mr. Dillon will decide about that. Who is this Mr. Dillon, anyway? He's a United States Marshal, that's who. A Marshal? 
Looks like you run into the wrong people, fella. I'll hold your gun, Chester. Search him. All right, you're here. Get around. All right. Turn around. The house is all torn up. He must have been looking for old Granby's money. I was never in that house. There's nothing on him. Not a thing. All right, Chester. Here's your gun. Catch it. Thank you. All right, now, what's your name, fella? Tremble. Joe Tremble. Where are you from? Up north. Up north where? All over. What are you doing down here, Tremble? Making a change. Yeah, sure. And some cowboy you ran into told you about Granby being rich. So you came here and kicked the old man around and hung him. And then tried to find the money. That's a lie. This is the first time I was ever near the place. I'm sure you did it, Trumbull, but I wish I had more evidence. A court of law just might not convict you the way things stand. You gonna let me go? No. I'm arresting you. And you're gonna stand trial. And I'll do my best to see you hung. I didn't do it, I tell you. And I'll go free, too. You'll see. There's something mighty wrong about you, Trimble, and I can't figure it at all. But I'll sure find out. Mother, it does your heart good, I know, when your young folks eat all of their breakfast cereal. That's why I'm so happy to tell you about new Sugar Crinkles. Sugar Crinkles, you know, is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Crisp golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice. They make breakfast more fun than a circus. Why, young folks love Sugar Crinkles so much, they disappear like magic. Now, you've had experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you, and others that just don't seem sweet enough to the youngsters. Well, what a wonderful surprise sugar crinkles will be to your whole family. For new sugar crinkles really are just right sweet. Remember, sugar crinkles make great snacks, too. And there's even more good news about sugar crinkles. Right now, there's a full-size package of Charms, that wonderful fruit-flavored candy, in every special package of sugar crinkles your dealer has. Ten delicious fruit-flavored Charms free of extra cost to you. So hurry. Get sugar crinkles soon as you can. Now back to gun smoke. Let Joe Tremble dig a grave out behind the house. Then we laid old Granby in it and covered him with dirt. I was pretty sure now that the old man had never had an extra dollar in his life and that he'd been killed for no reason at all. Anyway, Tremble had done a pretty thorough job looking for the money and he'd found nothing. On the ride into Dodge, I tried to figure out just what he was. But he didn't seem to fit anywhere. He wasn't a cowboy or a hunter or a gambler or even just a drifter. After we got him locked up in jail that night, Doc and I went over to the Texas Trail for a drink with Kitty. And I was telling him about it. Now then, uh, this fella Trimble, um, how old is he? Oh, around 25, I guess, Doc. Mm -hmm. Then he couldn't be running away from home. (laughs) No, he's a little old for that, Kitty. Well, anyway, they'll hang him. Well, I hope the judge agrees with you, Doc. Why shouldn't I? All I got so far is circumstantial evidence. But then you should have shot him out on the prairie. It's a good thing you're not a lawman. Well, maybe if I were, there'd be fewer killings around here. Uh, I I doubt that, Doc. 
You going up to Hayes for the trial, Matt? Yeah, I'll have to, Kitty. That'll take a week, I suppose. No, about. What do you ask? Nothing, only you've just been away for ten days. Well, I have to earn a living, Kitty. You could make more money gambling right here in Dodge. Oh, no, Kitty, don't start that. Good evening, Marshal. Oh, Major. Ah, Kitty. Good Doc. evening, Major. Oh, I do, Major. I'd like a word with you, Marshal. Uh, sure, Major. <laughs> so we can go over to the bar then. Right. Uh, I'll be back, Kitty. Doc. No hurry, Matt. Doc's got a lot of money. Oh, I, now I'll buy you one drink, Kitty. Just one drink, and that's all. Well, it's a start, Doc. <laughs> Let's go, Major. I had to come to Dodge on other business, Marshal. But I wanted to pass the word to you that we're looking for a man. Oh, the army? Yes, a deserter. Oh, not from Fort Dodge. Where was he stationed, Major? He was with the 7th Cavalry at Fort Lincoln. Oh, up in the Dakotas. Uh, and for some reason, they think he headed south. Now, I don't have much of a description of him, just that he was a private, about... Four twenty-five, curly blonde hair, and uh, he had a scar on his left hand. Yeah, that fits. What's his name, Major? He enlisted as Joe Gould, but he's known to have used the name Trimble. Uh huh. Well, he's right here in Dodge. What? I got him locked up in jail. <laughs> well, uh, that's fine, Marshal. But how did you know? I think he murdered an old man who lived a day's ride north of here. I'm going to have him tried for it. Well, that won't be necessary now, Marshal. I'll take over custody of him. No, no. Well, then he'd be tried at Fort Lincoln for desertion. I want him tried for murder. And i got to be there to present the evidence. You could go up to Fort Lincoln. No, the Dakotas are out of my territory, Major. Besides, this is a civil crime. The Army wants that man, Marshal. I'm sorry, Major. He's going to be tried in Hayes first. He is still a soldier, even if he did desert. Well, if the judge lets him off, you can have him. But not otherwise. Major, he tortured and hung an innocent old man, and I'm going to do my best to see him punished for it. Well, I'll have to take this up with my superiors, Marshal. Uh, you better hurry. I'm going to Hayes with him tomorrow. I hope you won't regret this, Marshal. I won't, Major. Not if Trimble is properly punished. I won't. I didn't wait till morning, but started out for Hayes with Joe Trimble that night. The trial lasted a week, and in spite of all the arguments I made, a judge finally decided that there wasn't enough real evidence to convict him. I even tried to make Trimble confess, but he was too smart for that. So there was nothing to do but bring him back, turn him over to the Army. I sent word to Fort Dodge and... And the next morning, the Major himself appeared to take him into custody. Well, Marshal, it looks as though you didn't have much of a civil case after all. Uh, he killed old Granby. I know he did, Major. But after all, the law is the law. Yes, and in the Army, orders are orders. I'm just sorry your judge didn't convict him after all. Oh, is that so? Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? Bring Trimble out, huh? All right, sir. Major, I'll give the Army credit for one thing. Uh -huh. What's that? Tribble and I rode back some 80 miles yesterday, and when we got here, he <laughs> wanted to sit up and play cards with Chester. Uh, yeah, there may be some bad men in the cavalry, Marshal, but they're all tough. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Well, he's yours, Major. Private Trimble, sir. You're under military arrest, Private. Not privileged to salute. Besides, you enlisted as Private Gould, not Trimble. Yes, sir. Report to the guard outside. Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, Trimble. You uh, know that you're mighty lucky, don't you? You should have died for what you've done. I told you I'd go free, Marshal. It'll catch up with you someday, Trumbull. It always does somehow. That's all I wanted to say. Yes, sir. 
Well, thank you, Marshal. I'll be getting along. Oh, uh, Major, hmm? uh, you said that uh, you were sorry that the judge didn't convict him. Why have you changed your mind? Well, I have orders from General Terry to return him to the Dakotas, to Fort Lincoln. Well, he'll be tried there, but he won't be hung for just desertion. Now, oddly enough, Marshal, he won't even be tried. For some months, anyway. He won't? No. It seems that the 7th Cavalry needs every man available. They're leaving Fort Lincoln on an expedition against the Sioux in the northern Cheyenne. Oh, the Sioux, huh? Yeah. I wonder if old Sitting Bull is still the chief medicine man with him. Sitting Bull? Yeah. Well, I never heard of him. But I expect the 7th will be heading into Montana territory. I don't know if they're after Sitting Bull's tribe, they will. He's always had a large camp over on the Little Bighorn. That's so? Yeah. Oh, by the way, who's in command of the 7th Cavalry now? Oh, an officer I served under a couple of years. I never did care for him. A General Custer. Now, Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say there, next time you hear a crackling noise in your kitchen, better get up and investigate. Maybe somebody just couldn't wait for his breakfast of crackling crisp post toasties. And that's a treat you shouldn't miss. Post toasties, you know, are the heat good cornflakes. Why, after one taste, I'll bet anything you'll agree with me. Post Toasties is just the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. There's nothing quite like sweet kernel corn flavor when it's toasted right in. Toasted into crisp, fresh cornflakes. Man, oh man, that's Post Toasties. Heat good cornflakes. Better try them. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. <laughs> figure it'll take us to drive this herd into Dodge after we cross the Cimarron, Larson. Well, depends on how hard you want to push him, Bryant. I hired you because I ain't been up here before. How far is it to Dodge? Oh, 50 mile, maybe. Uh, five easy days, then. I don't want to bring them steers in too poor. It's the men that's got poor this trip, not the steers. Uh, there's a lot of juice left in the men. Too much, maybe. Look at him. Oh, it's that old Indian that rode in a while ago. They're just having a little fun with him. They better take it easy. No telling how many warriors he's got waiting somewhere. Hey, Cotton. Tell that Indian to come over here. I want to talk to him. Yeah, he probably just wants a steer out of the herd. Well, I'm tired of giving good beef away. You, boss, my name is Tobiel. Tobiel, huh? What do you want, Tobiel? I guide cattle on trail to Dodge. We don't need any guide, Chief. I know the trail. I have letter from men in Dodge. Yeah. You read. Letter tell you how good guide Tobiel is. Let's see your letter. Yeah. Old time guide. Many years with Army. Big scout. Well, why ain't you still with the Army, then? 
too old now. What can guide cattle on trail to Dodge? Very cheap. <laughs> Why, you old liar. Tobiel never lie. No? Listen to this, Lyson. To whom it may concern, the name of this noble red man is Tobiel. He's a liar, a beggar, and a thief. What he wouldn't steal, a hound pup couldn't pull out of a tan yard. Give him some cold grub or a three-cent drink, if you have any about you, and then run him out of camp. <laughs> Signed, R. Durbin, J.C. Weiser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they sure wrote him a good letter. No, 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 letter can't say that. They, my friends, they write letter, help me get job. What'd you try to steal off of them? So be you never steal. No? Well, I'll take the word of a white man any day. Larson, you heard what the letter says. Have the boys run them off. Wait, let her lie. They fool me. Tobiel, man with much honor among white men in army. This ain't the army. Run them off, I said. Come on, chief. I leave, I leave. Alone. You leave, all right. And get going. Yeah. But these men die for this. If anybody dies, it'll be you. Here he is, boys. Let's send him down the trail. Why, here comes Miss Kitty. Ah, uh, so it is. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Master. Miss Kitty? You're going to work a little early, aren't you? No, I'm just getting a breath of air. <laughs> sure is going to be a nice evening, ain't it? For you, maybe. Oh, is there anything wrong, Kitty? Just that trail hurt across the river. Dodge will soon be full of drunken cowboys, all looking for trouble. <laughs> we'll handle them, Miss Kitty, don't you worry. Er, at least Mr. Dillon will. Shooting them's easy. I gotta talk to them. Oh, you can always quit, Kitty. Sure. Do what? Teach Sunday school? <laughs> well, you might. You talk like a Texan yourself, miss. You know what one of them told me once? He said I reminded him of his mother. He really said it. Well, that sounds nice, Miss Kitty. I thought so too, Chester. Till he got real drunk and told me his mother was the first woman to be hung south of San Antonio. She was. Who hung her? Probably he did. Oh, now, Miss Kitty, no man would hang his own mama. Why, it just ain't... Marshal? Yeah. We come to warn you. Oh, Warn me about what, mister? My name ain't mister, it's Weiser. My partner's name here is Derby. I can tell him my own name, Weiser. Shut up. No. Marshal, that Indian's going to get himself hurt. What are you talking about? That Indian, across the street there. See him? No. Uh-huh. Now, that's Tobiel. You know him? What's the trouble, Weiser? He keeps following us around. Says he's going to kill us. Tobiel? That doesn't sound like him. Well, it's true. Tis, you, you asked me. He's been haunting us for four days. Just stands around staring at us and saying we're going to die. I'd have shot him long ago, but I hear that's against the law around here. Where you men from? Wyoming Territory. Where'd you know Tobiel? We've been in Dodge a couple of weeks. Seen him around here. Now, what's the trouble between you? Well, we... <laughs> <laughs> we played a little joke on him, is all. Made him mad, I guess. We told him he could get a job guiding trail herds into Dodd, give him a letter. Yeah. He thought the letter said how good he was, but it really said he was a thief and to run him out of camp. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And he tried to use your letter, is that it? I guess so. Went away for a couple of days, and since he got back, he keeps saying he's going to kill us. It's getting on my nerves, Marshal. 
I'll shoot him, sure. You'll shoot anybody, and you'll hang for it, wiser. Now, wait here. I'll go talk to him. I gotta go to work, Matt. Okay, Kitty. I'll see you later. And you two heroes. You're pretty funny. I hope he does kill you. Why, you... Hold it, wiser. Watch him, Chester. Yes, sir. Hello, Tobiel. Hello, Marshal. Tobiel, those two men over there say that you threatened to kill them. Is that true? Did I? They told me the story, Tobiel. I'm sorry it happened. But uh, you can't kill men for that. Tobiel, old but still proud. You know what will happen if you do kill them, don't you? You'll go to jail and probably hang for it. No. Tobiel, never in jail. Man with much honor. Look, uh, Tobiel, I got no use for Wiser and Durbin. Neither one of them could be much good, but the law's the law, and... Tobiel no kill. Tobiel's medicine kill. Make very strong medicine against them. Well, you work all the medicine you want, but don't you do any killing yourself. And stay away from them, Tobiel. You're making them jumpy. There might be trouble if you don't. Tobiel, not afraid. They carry guns, Tobiel. All you've got's a knife. Remember that. Yeah. I remember. All right. Tell him, Marshal? Yeah. You men didn't understand him. He's not threatening to kill you himself. He's making Indian medicine against you, that's all. Well... Well, then why does he keep say, saying we're, we're going to die? And why is he always following us around? He thinks his medicine will kill you. I guess he wants to be there when it does. There's no harm in it. And I'm warning you again, both of you. You leave him alone. You do anything to that old man and I'll throw you in jail. Look, Marshal, that letter that started all this. That was Weister's idea, not mine. It sure was. Any idea we've ever had has been mine. Oh? I never did need you, Derby. Oh, is that so? Who who did your dirty work up to Cheyenne? You did. Yeah. You fool. I sure did, and you still owe me for it. Ah, shut up. So you ain't gonna do nothing about that Indian marshal. I know Tobiel pretty well, and I'll personally guarantee his word. Nobody's gonna do anything about him, including you. Good day, gentlemen. Good morning, Chester. Uh, good morning. Uh, M- Mr. Dillon, they just carried that fellow Weiser up to docks. What? Well, what happened to him? I don't know. Well, let's go see. Did you see him, Chester? No, sir. I just saw a couple men coming downstairs, and they said I'd better go get you. That's all they said. Oh, hello, man. What happened to Weiser, Doc? Well, for one thing, he's been stabbed, Matt. Oh? Bad? Bad enough to kill him. The men who carried him up here said they found him lying in an alley this morning. He's been dead, oh, three, four hours, I'd say. And there's something else, Matt. Take a look here. What? Somebody hit him on top of the head, Doc? No. No, they didn't hit him. He's been scalped, Chester. Indian style. Say, how are morning appetites at your house? Well, if they're pretty drowsy, here's a real good way to wake them up. Set a bowl full of Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes, at everybody's place. Just watch your folks take notice when they see how crisp Post Toasties are. And wait till they taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted in. Bet your whole tribe will agree with you. Post Toasties are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. 
And here's a thought if you'd like to make a good thing even better. Try topping Post Toasties with your favorite fruit. You'll find that's a mighty good way to start the day. Fact is, it's a downright delicious way. So next time you shop, be sure to ask for Post Toasties. They're the heat good cornflakes. You'll see. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heat good cornflakes. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. Now back to Gunsmoke. It was pretty hard for me to accept the idea that Tobiel had murdered and scalped Weiser. But the evidence seemed plain enough. The old Kiowa had been a highly valued army scout for over 30 years. And then had moved into a little hut at the edge of Dodge when he grew too old for active service. He'd lived quietly. And had never given anyone any trouble at all before. But Weiser and Durbin had injured his pride with their so-called joke. And Tobiel had evidently reacted in the only way he knew. Now I had to arrest him. Chester and I walked out to his hut. And just as we reached it, Durbin came running up. We told you, Marshal, didn't we? We told you that engine was going to kill somebody. Did you see it happen, Durbin? No, no, I, I went to bed. Weiser, he, he was doing a little gambling. That dirty red skin, he got him on the way home. It hasn't been proved, he did it. Well, of course he did it. Who else would scalp a man? I don't know. Well, here, look at that here, Marshal. Look at right here. Look at that. Hanging right onto his hut like, like he was bragging about it. Well, Mr. Dillon, that's a scalp. Yeah. He's drying it in the sun is what he's doing. What a murdering devil. You two stay here. I'll see if he's inside. Yes, sir. Come outside, Tobiel. I've got you now, Tobiel. Let's string him up, Marshal. Right here. Shut up, Devin. Tobiel, did you kill Weiser last night? Weiser? Kill? Stabbed with a knife and scalped. He died. Durbin there, he died too. You see, Marshal? He even admits I told you to stay out of this, Durbin. Now tell me straight, Tobiel. Did you kill him? Tobiel, no kill. To build medicine kill. And what's Weiser's scalp doing there? Scalp? Right there. Yeah. Weiser's scalp, all right. Where's your knife, Tobiel? Here, my knife. Look out, Marshal. He'll use it. No, he won't. Give me your knife, Tobiel. Yeah. That looks clean to me. Wait a minute. Well, of course, he's had plenty of time to get it clean. You think I kill Weiser with knife? Did you? Medicine kill Weiser. Tobiel, no kill. Now, Tobiel, I'm going to have to arrest you. You'll have to go to jail. Jail? No. Tobiel, man with too much honor for jail. I'm sorry, Tobiel, but you'll get a trial. Well, let's hang him now, Marshal. Indians don't need no trial. I'm the law here, Durbin, and don't you start anything like that. Big disgrace. Tobiel in jail. Yeah, I know, but I... I can't help it. Chester. Get that scalp. We'll need it for evidence. Yes, sir. Ready to 
go to supper, Matt? Yeah, I'll be right with you, Doc. Uh, Chester, you better stay here and watch Toby, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you can go eat when I get back. Uh, I'll see you later. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, I hear Tobiel's pretty unhappy about being locked up, Matt. Yeah, I had a long talk with him, Doc. I'm afraid he's going to be locked up for a long time. Oh? Why is that, Matt? Well, no judge will hang him on circumstantial evidence. But he'll probably go to prison. He hasn't any kind of an alibi, Doc. None at all. And if I know Tobiel, he'd rather hang than be in prison. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. What's that? Hey, it came from the jail. Come on. What happened, Chester? Somebody shot Toby right through the bars. Is he dead? He sure looked. Let me take a look at him. All right, Doc. Get out the front, Chester, and come up the alley. Yell if you see anybody. I'll cover the back. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? All right, I'm coming, Chester. What is it? I saw a Durbin. Oh? He ran out of the next alley and went into the Alpha Ganja there. All right, let's go get him. It must have been him that done it. Sure looks like it. There he is. Over at the bar. Get out of the way, Chester. Yes, sir. Darvin! You're under arrest, Durbin. Unbuckle your gun belt and drop it on the floor. What for, Marshal? For shooting Tobiel. I seen Chester standing there when I come out the alley. Should have shot him, too. Never mind the talk. Drop your gun. No. Shooting Tobiel was a bad enough mistake, Durbin. You finding out I did it was. Uh, See... I figured Tobiel must have saw me get wiser, and at the trial, he, he, he'd, he'd have started talking. No. He was home, alone, making medicine against you. He had no alibi at all. Then I, I killed him for nothing? If you hadn't killed him, you'd have probably been convicted. And you'd have gone free. Uh, look, Marshal, you can't prove that I, I killed Weiser. No. Well, and I ain't gonna hang for shooting no engine, not me. Don't try it, Durbin. Why not? You... You hit him both times, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Want me to take care of it? No. Somebody else can do it. Let you and me go give Tobiel a real fine burying, huh? I figure we kind of owe it to him. <laughs> 